The next uh, subtle but fundamental bug with the Onyx Books interface is uh, how article view is sort of counterintuitive. So this is a document, a PDF document with two columns. Uh, the document's meant to be read um, from top to bottom on the left and then top to bottom on the right and then you go to the next page. So Onyx Books provides an interface to assist with this called Article View and we can cut the page up into several, well we're going to we're gonna say that this document is two columns because that's what it is um, and the book should help browse this. So we set it to two columns. Now the document or the, the, the reader will actually show us the border of the columns that we cut, but it's not zoomed in, um, like was suggested in the interface. So we can see part of the other column here. If we tell the page to reverse to the next column, it just moves over a bit. So this is kind of counterintuitive and not very useful because we, we just want to focus on this part. What the, book sh what the reader should be doing is zooming as much as it can to keep this whole frame in view, and then traversing continuously traverse in screens until it's finished and then go into the next column and go like that. It sort of does that, but it just keeps everything in view. The way you can get around this is by manually dividing the document up into several sections. So we'll do that here. So the first page already has a bug. It's got extra margin here, which you won't see when we traverse to the next box. So we're in the next box. It shows us the borders. Here's the border, the top border, and the bottom border. So it doesn't even do the pagination consistently. As you can see, now we're at the bottom of the page and the borders, there's lots of space here. So it's not stitching this to the next column, which it should do. Uh, but also, we've had to manually tell the book what to do. Intuitively, it really should just automatically divide up the page into two columns and zoom in on these columns and traverse them, stitching the second column to the bottom of the first column and just going through the page like it's one continuous column. That would be the most sensible thing to do. Uh, there's also the issue of if you want to add margins to the document. So let's go here. Let's say we want to add a bit of margin to each side. We actually have to expand this box in four separate places to do margins on every side of the document, which is kind of silly. Um, so we'll set that. And now you can see that uh, there's some margins, but it's not consistent because I've had to click and drag it manually. What really should exist is, you know, and it doesn't even save, it doesn't even save the margins that I created beforehand, which is uh, kind of stupid. There should be a button saying expand margins on all sides, expand margins only in the vertical direction, expand margins only in the horizontal direction. And there also needs to be another feature that lets you add margins to the middle, because as you can see here, we don't have enough space in between these two columns. But if we want to display one column on the screen, we want to be able to add blankness on this right side. And for the other column, we want to add blankness on the left side. So there should be an option to say, cut the document into two columns, um, expand, and then just give it margins on all sides of each column, which would effectively add space to the middle. So. This interface leaves much to be desired. I think the way that they've gone is counterintuitive and kind of useless. Um, it does partially work, but it's still not all the way there. There's a much better way to design this. That's it.